This is Bishop Dale Broder. Thank you so much for joining our YouTube channel today. If this is a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it and then click the subscribe button and then turn on notification. Hit that little notification bell so that you never ever miss another one of our videos. And then if you're in the Metro Atlanta area on a Sunday, check out one of our exhilarating services at 8.30 a.m., 11 a.m., or 6 o'clock p.m. I'm going to read the passage of Scripture here, Matthew chapter 5, familiar passage, verse 13 through 16 in the New Living Translation. These are the words of Jesus. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You're the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. I just want to talk about, for a few moments, the blessing in brokenness. The blessing in brokenness. The famous words of the writer Charles Dickens, as he opens a tale of two cities, declares that it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light, and it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven, we were all going direct the other way. It's interesting that the times in which you live depend on your perspective and how you choose to respond to what life deals to you. And I just want you to understand that no matter what level of success that you reach in your life, success is not designed by God to be a satisfier. It's not designed to be a satisfier. Success was meant to give you credibility and to be able to provide you with a platform so that you can empower other folks to reach forward. It's just a platform. Success is just a platform. It's not designed to be the thing that keeps you satisfied. God is our satisfaction. The joy in the Spirit of God is where our true contentment comes from. And this is why you have to always, no matter how great something has been behind you, you have to always keep something ahead of you that keeps you reaching, that keeps you dreaming. You know why? Because a person without a vision for their future will always return to their past. And so if you don't have a real vision for your future, you'll end up returning to your past. That's why you have to keep something in front of you that is bigger than whatever has been behind you. And no matter what you're dealing with in your life right now, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 4 through 7 Notice these words in the NIV. It says, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those that I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I, ca I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you will prosper too. Now this is when Israel had been led into Babylonian captivity for 70 years. They were in trouble. They were not good times. They were in captivity for 70 years. And God spoke to them and told them, listen... Don't just dry up and die just because you're on lockdown, because you're in exile. 
He says, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, and eat whatever you produce, marry and have sons and daughters. In other words, he was simply saying to us, don't let trouble stop you from living. Don't let trouble stop you from living. Even though you get downsized, don't let trouble stop you from living. Even though your sons or your daughters might start acting in a way that becomes wayward, don't stop living. Even though your spouse starts declining in health, don't stop living. Though your income does not always meet your output, don't stop living. Though people start talking about you and you start dealing with things on this hand and on that hand, don't let trouble stop you from living. Life goes on. Even if you're in exile, even if you're in captivity, you still have to have your life. In him we live and we move and we have our being. Life goes on. Don't let trouble stop you from living. Don't let what happens in the economy, don't let what happens in the marketplace, don't let what happens in technology and innovation stop you from living. You still have to live. You still have to live. May I remind you, you need to always schedule your pleasure because pain will schedule itself. You have to make a decision in your mind that I don't care what I have dealt with this year, I am not going to let trouble stop me from living. If mama gets sick, you still have to live. You can't die because somebody that you love dies. You can't get sick because somebody that you love and that you care for gets sick. You can't let uh, five minutes of a day that has gone bad ruin your whole day. Don't let five minutes of what something that happened to you that was upsetting to you, don't let five minutes of your day ruin your whole day. Somebody can say something to you and you can have an attitude to be messed up and jacked up the rest of the day. Listen, don't let trouble stop you from living. They were in exile for 70 years. God says, build houses. He says, life goes on. Plant gardens. Have children, sons and daughters, and let them marry. Don't wait until times get better in order to start living. You don't know when times are going to get better. They were in exile for 70 years. Don't let trouble stop you from living. Don't let the threat of terrorism stop you from enjoying your life. Come what may. Que sera, sera. I'm not going to sit at home in fear, scared to go anywhere. I, I trust in Jesus. He came that I might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm not going to be afraid to get on an airplane, on a bus, on a train, in an automobile, in an Uber. Whatever I need to do, I'm going to keep moving in life and I'm not going to let trouble stop me. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. You have to be determined. I'm not going to let trouble stop me from living. I'm not going to let trouble stop me from living. Will you say that with me? I'm not going to let trouble stop me from living. Everybody was saying it. I'm not going to let trouble stop me from living. Say it again. I'm not going to let trouble stop me from living. You don't have to let it stop you from living. I'm not going to let it stop me from living. And let me just say this, the worst words that could ever be spoken at your funeral is for somebody to say, he or she had so much potential. (laughs) What sorrowful words to hear at somebody's funeral. He had so much potential. She had so much potential. I want you to remember this for 2020. That there are three bones that you're going to need to thrive in 2020. You're going to need a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone. Your wishbone is a desire. It is a dream. It is a vision. Your backbone is your courage to pursue your dream, to pursue your vision, to pursue Uh, the desire that is in your heart. And then you're going to need a funny bone. The funny bone is the wit to be able to endure it. That's some crazy stuff that happened when you're in life, in marriage. And if you don't learn to find humor 
in what you're dealing with, you'll never make it through. I laugh every opportunity that I get. I, I mean, laughter is like a medicine to me. I like to take regular doses of it. Because there's a lot of serious stuff to stress you out and create anxiety on the inside of you. But laughter is a natural anti-anxiety drug treatment. And so you need to give yourself regular doses of it. And so that's why you need a wishbone, a backbone, and a funny bone to be able to make it in 2020. I, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, there ought to be something that you're wishing, hoping, and planning will happen for you in this year. And you need the courage to pursue it, the courage to go after it, the courage to plan it and to make it happen. And you need to have a funny bone so you can laugh along the way when things start hurting and when people start disappointing you that you can find something in every day and every situation to laugh about. When the moment gets too tense, tickle them. Break out in a laugh. Life is too short for you to die and not get your laughs out. Maybe that's why somebody said that it tickled me to death. I'd rather be tickled to death than driven to death in bitterness and sourness and negativity and griping and mealy-mouthing and complaining. I'd rather die laughing, taking my medicine. So those three bones I want you to remember to take with you in 2020. Your wishbone, your backbone, your funny bone. And if you don't have a funny bone, borrow someone. I tell people, everybody needs a fool in their life. <laughs> Somebody that has the capacity to make you laugh. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs a fool in their life. And whenever things get tense in the relationship, there's sometimes my wife, if she gets upset with me about something, I know how to make her laugh. <laughs> I, I made her laugh so hard the other day in the store, she nearly choked to death. I got tickled, she got tickled, and we were standing there, both there, just standing there in the middle of the store, the lady looking at us like we were crazy, but we were having the time of our life. I felt so relaxed when I, when I left out of there. You, you, you got to learn, I'm just telling you, I, I'm not going to trade my funny bone for anything. Always keep your funny bone. Aren't you glad that you are a part of such a balanced ministry? Let me just remind you of this, that in this coming year, that we're going to conceive some things. We're going to conceive some things, and you're going to conceive some things in your heart and in your mind. And then also in 2020, you're going to be delivered from some things. Thank God that he is still a deliverer. And here's a principle I want you to get. Conception often happens in pleasure. Deliverance often happens in pain. Conception often happens in pleasure. When women conceive children, it happens in pleasure. But when they deliver, they deliver in pain. There's a counterbalance. And so there is both a conception and then there is a deliverance. And as you move through your life and, and realize that what you conceive in pleasure must be delivered oftentimes in pain because some of them will involve these three things that I call losses, lessons, and blessings. Losses, lessons, and blessings. Losses, lessons, and blessings. They are the losses in your life that teach you the lessons. And they are the lessons that when you learn to apply them, that bring in the blessings. Losses, lessons, blessings. Losses, lessons, blessings. You see, your greatest wisdom comes out of your greatest foolishness. Losses, lessons. Your greatest wisdom comes out of your greatest failure. Losses, lessons, blessings. And so there's a process of what God builds in us over time. He builds certain things in us. And I, I, I'm, I'm still 
thankful to God for all of the wonderful things that he does for us. For every season in your life, God has a solution, a supply, and a strategy. I want you to notice that. For every season in your life, God has a solution. He has a solution. God has a supply. He has a supply. God has a supply. He's more than enough. He never runs out. God has a supply and God has a strategy. Every season in your life, you have to operate as you get older, you have to change your strategy. A person in their 70s cannot operate in the same strategy as a teenager. You'll throw something out of place. <laughs> your strategy has to, has to change. When you're young, you, you overwhelm problems with your strength. But when you get older, you overwhelm problems with your wisdom. Your strategy, God has, he's got a solution. He's got a supply and he's got a strategy for every season in your life. You have to know the season that you're stepping into so you'll know what to use at the appropriate time. And you don't use the strategies of another season for the current season. Because where you are right now will call for different methodologies. As you move forward into this year of 2020, there will be something to achieve. There will be something to preserve. And there will be something to avoid. I just want you to th think about that. There will be something to achieve. There will be something to preserve. And there will be something to avoid in this coming year. What am I called to achieve? What has God called you to achieve in 2020? What has he called you to preserve that you already started in this year? That you don't want to throw it away just because another day flips over and you step into a new year. There are certain things that you ought to preserve to carry this with you. The good habits, the disciplines that have brought you, you, you preserve those, the values that God has built into you. The things that build your character, inform you in the likeness and in the image of Jesus Christ. Preserve that. There's always something to achieve. There's always something to preserve. There's always something to avoid. Sometimes that something is a someone. <laughs> yes, you know, you know exactly who it is. You know who it is. And I just want you to realize that when God begins to move in us, he begins to bring us into a place as you step into 2020, these three things that you do, you come into a place, 2020 is a time of reflection, 2020, I know people are going to talk about it being perfect vision, but only hindsight is 2020. And because of that, I want you to learn to reflect. To look back, see what has worked, what hasn't, what needs to change, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what are my opportunities, what are my threats, what is it that I, ought, that I should continue doing, what should I stop doing, what should I improve that I'm already doing. You need to take a time of reflection looking back. It's 2020. 2020. You'll be surprised of the wisdom that you gain. You will learn through the reflection what you need to achieve for the coming year. You'll learn through the reflection what you need to preserve. What do you need to keep doing? You'll learn through the reflection what you need to avoid that slowed you down, that distracted you, that broke your focus. What do I need to reflect on in 2020? It's a year of reflection, 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 reflection. After you reflect, it brings you into this posture, selection. You don't just look back without making new selections. There's new choices that need to come. What do I select now that's going to be different than the place that I've come from? What do I do differently? I need to make different selections now. Because your choices determine your character, your conduct, and your destiny. Your choices. Your choices. After you have reflection... That's why when you do something bad, you do something poorly, you do something that is of ill repute or bad character, something that was disapproving by those in authority over you, be their parents or supervisor. When you've done something wrong, you need time to sit down and think about what you've done. Not just punished, but reflective time. Because reflection turns experience into insight. Reflection 
turns experience into insight. So when you reflect, now it gives you a new wisdom to be able to select. Reflection leads to selection. What do I choose to carry forward with me now? What do I choose to do differently? It is reflection and then selection. Your decisions will determine your destiny. Your decisions will determine your character. Your decisions will determine your conduct. Reflection, look back. Selection, what do I carry from that? What new ideas do I launch forward to? What innovative thing can I bring out of my life? What do I choose as a result of this? Who do I choose to be my partners, to be my helpers in what God is calling me to do in this next season? Reflection, selection, the third word is acquisition. Acquisition. What do I need to acquire? What do I need to acquire? What do I need to acquire to make me successful? Successful on the journey where God's calling me. What skills do I need? What qualifications do I need? What training do I need? What partnerships do I need? What do I need to acquire? Sometimes it's acquiring some wins under your belt. Uh, so what do I need to acquire? What do you need to acquire? Whenever God brings you to a place in your life and you're looking and you're saying, God, I so desperately need you. I need you, God. I need you. You'll realize that Jesus was saying to us that you are the light of the world. And that light is not designed at all to be hidden. The light is designed to be seen. And you know, that's, that, that's why I wanted you to have one of these glow sticks. Because many years ago, I was out at an amusement park, and, and I watched a lady take her uh, one of these glow sticks and hand it to her little toddler child. And that little toddler got that little glow stick and the little toddler was so excited. He was smiling, just grinning from ear to ear, waving it around, just waving it around. We were standing in line, and I'm, I'm out there observing this little toddler with the glow stick, just waving it because the mama gave it to him. And then he had a big brother. And I'm sitting there. We were in line, and I watched it get dark. And as soon as it got dark, I watched his big brother come and snatch his glow stick out of his hand. And he bent it and broke it. And the little boy, his toddler brother, started crying because he said, you broke my glow stick. You broke my glow stick. You broke my glow stick. And his brother explained it to them. I broke it so that I could fix it. Because it won't do what it was created to do until you break it. That's why there is a blessedness in brokenness. Until you're broken, your light won't shine. The breaking lets the light out. It, it, it was interesting, the boy didn't snatch it until it got dark outside. But when it got dark, what was in it? The little boy didn't understand its purpose. He just thought that he was given something and he was waving it like a flag, but it didn't have a glow. Until his brother snatched it and broke it. And all of a sudden it released the luminescent light on the inside. It wasn't designed to be put under a bushel. And it doesn't shine in the light that's why he calls us out into the dark world not to just stay in the church and testify to one another he calls us out into a dark world that's why God broke you out of your broken marriage out of your broken virginity out of your broken self-esteem your broken security out of your brokenness Jesus then became the one that was enough for you and it is your brokenness that allows your light to shine. 
You don't have a testimony if you haven't been broken. Brokenness on earth creates openness in heaven. When you get broken, light starts shining. The light is in you and it cannot get out until you are broken. God was looking to actually fix you by breaking you. I had a man that said to me one time that he had to have surgery because he had injured himself and, and his bone grew back crooked because he never went to the hospital and had it set properly. So they had to break his arm again. They broke it so they could fix it. And while you thought that God was hurting you, he was fixing you for ministry. He was letting the world see your scars to say, yes, something happened there. It happened, but I didn't let trouble stop me from living. God became my fixer. And look at the light of how I can still smile even though I've been through hell and high water. Something happened in my life that almost destroyed me, but in the brokenness, the light of God's understanding, the light of His mercy, the light of His compassion, the light of His mercy shines through me because I was broken. God fixes you as a result of your brokenness. Just when you couldn't understand God, why, why did you do that? God says, I was trying to get the light out. I was trying to get the light out. I was trying to get the light out. And I just came to remind you of this, that all of the brokenness and the disappointment that you've experienced here in 2019, God wants to put you in a position of shining. It was creating your platform, your message, your mistakes. They shine best on a black backdrop where you've been messed up. That's why not many mighty, not many noble, not many people that had come through the halls of finer education. But God says, I wanted to take that that was rejected, that that had messed up, that that had fallen and gotten dirty. I wanted to be able to put my, my glory on that one. I wanted to take the one that was the bastard child. I wanted to take the one that was born out of wedlock. I wanted to be able to take the one that didn't finish school. I wanted to be able to take the one that was disreputable and they had to go to jail and had to do some time. And I wanted to be able to do something so spectacular in their life that the light of God, I wanted to be able to break you so that out of your arrogance and your pride, humility could shine, compassion could shine, tenderness could shine and that you would have mercy on other individuals. You don't ever know what God is breaking you for, but something is going to shine out of you because the blessing that God put in you cannot get out unless you are broken. And that's why there is a blessedness in your brokenness. And when the children of Israel were commanded to walk around the walls of Jericho. They walked around for seven days. One time every day and on the seventh day, seven times that day. And God said, you carry a horn and a lantern. And when I give you the command, you shout and you break the lantern open. When they broke the lantern, it was so that the folks could see the light and when they looked out there they saw the light God magnified it and made it look like it was many more than what it was God can't magnify you until you get broken and God cannot give you to a hurting world a lost world a confused world until he first breaks you when God breaks you it is the first step of God fixing you so that God can use you for his glory and let what he put in you flow out of you and it's designed to be seen and not under a bushel. May I announce to you, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory 
of the Lord is risen upon you. You didn't have anything worth anybody bringing you to a platform for until you had a testimony broken so he could fix you. Some things cannot be fixed until they are broken. There's always a breaking before there is a birthing. There's no baby without the breaking of the water. No matter how you do it, whether it is through a vaginal delivery or a cesarean, there must be a breaking before there is a birthing. And I just want you to know today that if you've been going through brokenness, get ready for your birthing. Because what you thought was a wound is really an entry place for what has been in you to enter into the world and to shine like a light that brings glory to God. The time is over now of just being content, just being. God wanted to change us by breaking us for His glory. We hope that you enjoyed that message. Don't forget to like and subscribe and then press the notification bell so that you don't miss another one of our videos. And if you want to partner with us, click the Give Now button. Thank you for what you do.